So it all started back in 2019. Michael Harrison came to Baltimore 2019 from New Orleans, from their police department. There he served 26 years, most recently as superintendent. He became the fifth commissioner the city had within four years. Let me say that again. In 2019, Michael Harrison became the fifth police commissioner that Baltimore City had in just four short years. Now, assuming a federal consent decree, the department had entered in 2017. It was a very critical time here in Baltimore. Very critical time. Under that cloud, we got Michael Harrison. Now, you know, I've had a chance to meet him one or two times. Seems like a nice guy. Seemed like he had the city's best interest at heart, but he was stepping into a very difficult position. So it was announced today that the police commissioner, Michael Harrison, is stepping down. Departing after four years, he did lead the department through some court-ordered reforms. But as I said, he was the, the, the former NOPD chief Harrison was not without his controversy. He was serving under a five-year contract. The contract was scheduled to end in March of 2024. So he moved to Baltimore from New Orleans. And, you know, so in 2019, I was complaining about the amount of money they were paying him. I was, I was, I was, I, I was talking a whole, a whole bunch of stuff about the money that they were paying. I was wondering why they could not have promoted from within their ranks. But today, Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott announced that Michael Harrison would be leaving his role as police commissioner after four years just one year short of this contract being over. The mayor announced that today. Um, So why? Why is this happening? That's what I want to know. So he, he, he led these, led the department during, during a, a critical time. This tenure was focused on leading Baltimore and the the embattled police department of Baltimore through a series of reforms. You remember back in 2015, the death of Freddie Gray, there was a lot going on. So his departure announced in a very short um, notice. I mean, <laughs> talk about uh, surprise. I, I was surprised to hear it. I I was so surprised to hear this, but uh, Harris's departure announced today, Thursday morning, at a news conference from City Hall. Mayor Brandon Scott said the decision came after numerous conversations with Harrison over the past few weeks. Harrison uh, said he does not have another job opportunity lined up. Both provided some vague answers when asked about the timing. Vague answers. The lack of transparency here, for me, is concerning. Concerning why? Is this to try to get ahead of a controversy that's getting ready to come out? Is this because Harrison does not agree with something that the mayor's trying to do? 
Oh, yes. I got a lot of questions. I got a lot of questions, and um, we're going to take some time, slow walk this, and try to figure out exactly what is going on. So Brian Scott says that this decision comes after a bunch of conversations. Were those conversations arguments? He does not have another job lined up. So was he fired? The answers are vague. The the answers are vague. Both of them wanted to focus less on the why and more on his track record. They want to focus more on the progress that the department took and the progress that has been demonstrated since Harrison took office in March of 2019. You remember, he pledged, Michael Harrison, pledged to change the culture of policing in Baltimore at that time. That's what he said he wanted to do. Has that exactly happened? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the mayor went on to say that in those conversations, it became convincing to me that this was the most opportune time for me to pass the torch. Harrison said this of the conversations with Mayor Brandon Scott. We truly have become the greatest comeback story in America. Wait, 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 what? (laughs) What are you talking about? See, statements like this that, um, that, that frustrate me. Baltimore is a notoriously violent city. I'm not going to make any excuses for that. I'm not going to hide from the fact that that is the case. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's something that it isn't. A notoriously violent city. Homicides and shootings have been trending downward in the last few months. But Critics of Harrison, and um, I I definitely uh, think that I am in the boat with the critics of Harrison. I think that Baltimore is a unique city. In order to tackle crime prevention and crime reduction in a unique city like Baltimore, you need to know Baltimore. And and Harrison didn't know Baltimore. He's just getting to know Baltimore now, four years in. Because this is this is a city totally different from New Orleans. Totally different. So this reduction that um I just spoke about, reduction in homicides, reductions in shootings, is too little, too late, in, in in my opinion. Officers are using less force against citizens as Brandon Scott's administration continues uh, to talk about a holistic approach to public safety. I think that this is going to be one of the pillars that he runs on for re-election. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. So so Harrison is serving this five-year contract, which would have ended in March of 2024. Moved here from New Orleans. Of course, in New Orleans, uh, he, he rose through the ranks of that city's police department and ultimately led the agency through a reform process similar to the court order changes being implemented in Baltimore. That's one of the reasons why he was chosen after this nationwide search. Now, I will say this. Baltimore's a tough city, unique and tough. 
Michael Harrison has lasted significantly longer than many of his recent predecessors. Of course, the Baltimore Police Department was placed under federal consent degree in 2017 after the Department of Justice investigators found a pattern of unconstitutional policing. Harrison was chosen to lead our police force through that period of reform. That period of reform came after the death of Freddie Gray in uh, Baltimore police custody. That tragedy spurred civil unrest across our city, increased scrutiny of policing and policing practices. So that's how we got Michael Harrison by way of New Orleans. Now, I've often said this when some and I've and I've usually given this with regards to record companies and, and the A and R department, right? So you have a record company. They have an A and R department, and we're talking about back in the day. They don't even have big A and R departments anymore. But the A and R department was the artist repertoire. The artist relations, that was the person, the A&R guy or gal, was the person who found the talent, who found the artist. That's why they're called it the artist relations, artist repertoire. Right? <laughs> and so these A&Rs would find artists, find them. Sign them to the label. Get them signed to the label. And let's say something happens to this A&R. And this A&R person no longer works at the record company. So a new A&R is hired. But this new A&R doesn't believe in the artist that the old, the predecessor, the former A&R person brought on board. They don't believe in them. They have their own artists. That they are liking. So what happens? Many of you may have wondered. What happened to so and so? They had one song. Two songs. One album. Then I didn't hear from them anymore. Then if you if you read behind the scenes. You would find out maybe that artist got dropped. Or they're sitting on the shelf. And you would say. Why did that happen? They had, they was, that was a good artist. Here's why. Many instances. The A&R person changed. The A&R person is not only in charge of the artist relations, but they're also in charge of the record company's relations with the artist in many instances. They're the advocate for the artist. And if the advocate does not believe in the artist, oh, yes. the artist is in bad shape. The artist is in bad shape. So a new A&R person comes and they don't believe in the talent that their predecessor signed. They don't believe in the talent that the predecessor brought to the record company. So what do they do? Oh, that's easy. They get rid of that artist and bring in some new ones. And whenever you have a regime change, whenever you have a regime change, that person, it doesn't matter whether this is management on your job or the mayor at City Hall. When that regime change comes in, when the mayor of Baltimore became Brandon Scott, he wanted to have his own person. He wanted to have, a.k.a. his own artist repertoire, his own A&R, his own artist. So I didn't think that this relationship was going to last because they have different philosophies on things. So when you have a person like Michael Harrison who was retired, getting ready to retire, coming in, came here for big money, has a, has a strategy, that differs from the current mayor. Brandon Scott did not bring in Michael Harrison, and I don't think he would have. So you have this difference 
You have this new regime come in to Baltimore. And I'm reading it between the lines here. Michael Harrison and Brandon Scott, they don't get along. I mean, there may be respect there, but their philosophy differences. You, if you ever watch the press conferences, they look. It, it looks, you know, it just watch the body language. They ain't on the same page. They've never been on the same page. So this does not surprise me. So Brian Scott said that he has chosen the Deputy Commissioner Richard Worley to succeed Harrison as the acting commissioner. This is the step to have Worley become uh, the new commissioner. Worley is a 25-year veteran of the force. He has spent his entire law enforcement career climbing the ranks of his hometown department. Why wasn't Worley put in in the beginning? He had like 21 years at that point. But in a statement released soon after today's announcement, the Baltimore Police Union expressed support for Worley. Union leadership had been openly critical of Harrison throughout his tenure. There was always blowback because, A, he's not from here, and he has a completely different strategy, right? So there was this push and pull and push and pull. Harrison probably like, you know what? I'm getting paid so much money. I ain't even worrying about this. But now it's like, okay, me and the mayor clash. Me and, you know, the police union clash. The citizens clash. Nobody, y'all not appreciate me. And that's assuming that no, no, nothing crazy is going to come out. We haven't ruled that out yet. So the police union called his crime-fighting strategies too lenient and bemoaning the department's deepening manpower shortage. Yes, there are less police officers than they want. So the union, oh, the union, I don't think, the union has been hard on him. They, they said this, this is the, uh, the union leadership said on Twitter, how many lo- lost their lives from this failed approach? Talking about the failed approach of police commissioner Michael Harrison. Basically saying he got blood on his hands. This is the police union. Oh, yeah. This is like a reality show. They added that they hope Worley will demonstrate a renewed focus on recruiting and retaining more officers to fill the department's ranks and get violent criminals off the streets. Recruitment. They say it's down. I've seen posters. I go to their Facebook page. I see them at job fairs. They're they're trying to recruit. But the biggest, the biggest recruitment asset is good officers. You can throw money in in the officer's uh, candidate's face. That's not going to make people want to become police officers. I mean, it helps, but in order for recruitment to be up, potential candidates have to see good officers. And I think that that point gets lost. Your biggest recruitment asset, this is to the police union and everybody else, your biggest recruiting asset for new officers is going to be good officers. Those candidates have to see the relationship between the citizens and the department become better. They're going to have to see that police officers are respected. And that doesn't mean you're going in bashing heads. That's, That's not how you get the respect. 
But good and fair and honest police officers start having those Start showing us some of those. I'm sure that there's some there. That's what is going to help recruitment. And of course, you're paying them. And we want to get violent criminals off the streets. But I don't like the, the undertones there. When the police union says they want a renewed focus on recruiting and retaining more officers, to fill the department's ranks. Okay. Fill you on that. But then when they say we want to get violent criminals off the streets, what is the, the underlining meaning of that? Why do you say it that way? When asked why he chose Worley, the mayor alluded to the veteran officer's ability to connect with members of the rank and file, as well as the citizens of Baltimore who want police to treat them fairly and keep them safe. Well, these are good reasons here. And Harrison also said his plan all along was to groom a successor from within the department. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but I wish that that's where we started from. I said this in 2019, and I'm saying it now. I think that this is a step in the right direction because the appointment of Michael Harrison, a retired officer from New Orleans to head Baltimore's police department, was one of the biggest uh, uh, deficiencies in recruitment. A lot of officers were disenchanted with that. You have Worley, who had at that time been in the police force in Baltimore for 21 years. They just look right past him and say, we're going to get a guy who's retiring from New Orleans. That's a problem. Things like that affect recruiting. You had officers who are disgruntled. And people on the outside looking in saying, dang, they don't even they don't even promote from within. Why would I want to work there? It's already a dangerous job. It's already a thankless job in many instances. And they don't even support their own. Oh, yeah. That's a recruiting nightmare. Recruiting nightmare. But Brandon Scott said that all of those things led me to that decision. As a fellow son of Baltimore and an experienced public servant, it is clear that he is the right person to lead this department into the future. So he's getting a thumbs up from Brandon Scott, the mayor. He's getting a thumbs up from the police union. He's getting a thumbs up from Michael Harrison, the soon-to-be former police commissioner. During a police department budget hearing earlier this week, Harrison hedged when asked whether he would stay in Baltimore through the end of his contract, saying that the decision would fall to the mayor. And it's interesting. That's a little bit, and I think that a little bit of things are going to start coming out. He denied you know, fever, you know, ferociously denied that he was seeking a chief position in D.C. after rumors circulated to that effect. Of course, we were talking about more money, contract getting ready to be up. Maybe D.C. needs a police commissioner. Could that be the reason? And and Brandon Scott said, oh, you want to go? Then go ahead. I need a commitment. Are you going to stay? Maybe he's saying, I need a commitment. Are you going to stay? And he's like, I don't know if I can give you that right now. And Brandon Scott, like, look, this is how we doing Park Heights. We want you out of here. You might have said that. Now, city council members had questions after Harrison gave a brief presentation listing the department's recent accomplishments. It almost sounded like to some people that he was taking a victory lap, that he was declaring mission accomplished. 
but he claims that he wasn't doing that. Harrison claims that he was very encouraged that the crime trends continued on the downward trajectory and that the department is on a much better path. Is today's police department in better shape than it was four years ago? You know, that that question that they asked. Are you better off today than you were previously? I have to say that the police department from the outside seems to be in a better position, seems to be in a better place than it was before. Harrison's presence and mild manner temperament has won him praise. That probably is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why he was selected. He does have a good temperament for leadership, for the public facing leadership. He provided the Baltimore Police Department with a very rare period of stable leadership. Remember, before him, the commissioner job had changed hands five times in four years. It was not stable at all. Prior to coming to Baltimore, Harrison had spent 30 years, 30 years in various roles in the New Orleans Police Department. News of his departure comes at a time of shifting attitudes towards public safety among Baltimore's leaders. Last week, Ivan Bates, the state's attorney, who took office in January, announced a new program that allows police to issue citations for minor crimes such as loitering, drug possession, and public urination. The program marks a significant departure from the more progressive policies of his predecessor, Marilyn Mosby. Marilyn Mosby declined to prosecute such low-level cases. Bates, who is primarily or was primarily a defense attorney, presented the change as a return to accountability in Baltimore, and Harrison expressed his support saying that it would allow his officers to be more proactive. In a statement today, Ivan Bates praised Harrison's reform efforts. He called him uh, one of the most impressive leaders our city has seen in its troubled history of mass incarceration and abuses of power. Despite implementing a full overhaul of department policy and training, Harrison repeatedly faced criticism for failing to significantly reduce gun violence. Let's keep in mind, while Harrison was taking this victory lap that wasn't a victory lap, Baltimore homicides have surpassed 300 annually for the past eight years. Harrison often stressed the importance of getting to the root causes of violence, which I agree with. And a symptom of the myriad of social challenges that cannot be solved through law enforcement action alone. I agree with him. I agree with him on that. So the, the challenge always is, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about these challenges? And and how are you going to handle policing? These are are always the challenges. So um, numerous conversations. Over the course of these conversations, Brandon Scott and Michael Harrison decide that it's time for him to depart in his role as Baltimore's police commissioner. Harrison thanked the mayor, the city, and um, some other officials, departments, 
said he does not have any job offers. The first thing he wants to do is breathe. He hasn't been breathing? (laughs) Well, I don't know. But as I said, Harrison's, his future has really been a topic of discussion in the last week or so. When Harrison came to Baltimore, he said to me he would groom me as his successor, says Worley. Harrison says that I'm not going to Washington, D.C. But he did say that he loves his job and his career and still has the juice to go on. He sat down with T.J. Smith earlier this week trying to address some of those rumors. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Baltimore, I love the city of Baltimore. Policing is something that our city has struggled with for many years. When I was a kid, police were looked at. We often had the images of officer friendly. There was a community police partnership. People did not look down on the occupation of police. It was an honorable profession. I don't know if we can get back to that point, but we need to try to do something. Something different than what's been happening. Um, I wish former, soon to be former commissioner, Michael Harrison, the best of luck in his future endeavors. I uh, know that he came into a very difficult job in a new city, doing a job that's already thankless, but he was paid a lot of money to do it. Let's not feel too bad for him. You listen to the Diamond K Show on fire-tv.com. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thank you for tuning in to On Fire TV. We are a 24-hour independent news and entertainment channel. We produce original movies, documentaries, reality-based shows, and podcasts. On Fire TV is made possible because of viewer and listener support. Go to onfire-tv.com to become an On Fire Plus member. Your dollars and your support have kept us going, and we are just getting started.